Today, I want to share with you a different way of working with ArcGIS, and that's with the ArcGIS API for Python and the Jupyter Notebook. Python is an open language that is simple to use and understand. You can interact with the ArcGIS API for Python numerous ways, but today, we're going to use the Jupyter Notebook. The Jupyter Notebook is a common, open source, browser-based application that allows you to store code, images, and with the ArcGIS API for Python, maps. In two lines of code, we can have our Jupyter Notebook count to 10. It's as simple as hitting Shift-Enter and watching it run live. With one simple line of code, we can import the ArcGIS API for Python into our notebook. And with this, we can make an anonymous connection to ArcGIS Online. And with that anonymous connection, we can begin to search for content, either in Esri's Living Atlas or ArcGIS Online. Today, I'm interested in the location of the Esri Global Offices. As you can see, return numerous results. But I'm interested in the second item. I can add this to my notebook as a fully functional web map. I can interact with it, zoom in, and even examine pop-ups. The ArcGIS API for Python is an open and interoperable API that enables data scientists, content publishers, and organization administrators to automate their analysis and script their web GIS. The ArcGIS API for Python integrates seamlessly with Pandas, which is Python's open module for data access. With this, we can connect to a local file, import it into our notebook, and begin to examine it. Here, I brought in a table of our office locations, along with their internet and private MPLS network capacity bandwidth. Since this is information I want to keep private, I can make a secure connection to either ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. And with a secure connection, I can add another map to my notebook. But this time, I want to add my table of office locations styled by the private MPLS network capacity. As you can see, our Redlands office has the most capacity while our Washington DC office has the second most. I can also integrate custom geoprocessing tools and scripts directly into my notebook. Here, I have a script that will calculate our network connectivity along our MPLS network. And from here, we can publish this data to either ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online, share it with our colleagues, and then bring it back into our notebook. The Jupyter Notebook is a powerful method for not only sharing the results of your analysis, but also your code and your interactive methodology and how you achieve that. For example, we can share this Jupyter Notebook with our IT staff. Using over 300,000 point-to-point voice calls, we can begin to map total call volume and average audio quality between nodes. Then we can create link charts detailing the office Office's interconnectivity. The ArcGIS API for Python is an open and interoperable API that seamlessly integrates with numerous other popular and open frameworks. And with these, we can conduct complex link analysis, allows us to identify who is talking to who, identify their neighbors, and see if they're having similar audio quality issues, and then begin to identify micro communities and their spatial relationships to determine whether or not the problem is localized or part of a broader trend. These are just a few of the things that you can accomplish with the ArcGIS API for Python and data science. Now I'll turn it over to Alberto Nieto, who will show you how you can automate your web GIS workflows. Thank you. Thank you, James. That was a great example of how Jupyter Notebooks and Python empower data scientists. We can also use the ArcGIS API for Python to automate your web GIS workflows. These could be analytical tasks or administrative operations, like the deployment of users, groups, and privileges, or the addition of content across multiple environments and networks. So let's take a look at a quick example here. I have my ArcGIS Enterprise that I just installed using Cloud Builder. It's pretty basic and brand new. It has no groups, no content, and no users. So I'm going to fire off my first Python script. It's going to reach an input CSV file with a list of users, groups, and privileges. And it's going to go ahead and establish these. 
Now, today's WebGIS administrators are responsible for deploying and maintaining multiple organizations across multiple environments, like dev and ops, and also multiple networks. A script like this could help you achieve consistency across your administrative tasks by reducing human error and automating the basic steps of your setup. So let's go back and see what we just did. I'm going to go back to our ArcGIS Enterprise and refresh our pages. We will find newly created users with the right roles and permissions. We'll find newly established groups created nicely by the script. And in our home page, we will also find styling applied with the right logo, background, description, et cetera. So in the steps of setting up our ArcGIS Enterprise, we were able to automate the deployment of users, groups, and privileges. But what about the content? Well, with the ArcGIS API for Python, you can publish a variety of services from multiple input formats. We can publish service definition files that you may have created with ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. We can publish the usual shape files and file geo databases, but now you can also publish CSVs with geometry. And you can even connect to the federated servers that may be part of your ArcGIS enterprise. And new with the ArcGIS API for Python is the ability to clone content. With this, all you have to do is pass the item ID, and the ArcGIS API for Python will go grab the relevant information, like the dependencies and metadata, and it will clone these items to your target portal. It's such a simple operation. So let's go back to our ArcGIS Enterprise homepage, refresh that, and we will see the content that has been added so far. This is a brief look at how the ArcGIS API for Python helps you automate your WebGIS administrative workflows, helping you achieve consistency, efficiency, and reliability across your organization. Mm -hmm.